ಅದು ಹೇಳಿ ಓಕೆ Keep your pointer. Is the mic good? Okay. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Hello. All right. Uh, thank you for being here. This is the last, uh, pretty late in the day on a pretty warm day in Austin. I personally would like to be out sitting with a cold beer, but I have to do this. <laughs> I don't know what your excuse is. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm very happy that you're all here. Uh, we're a minute behind, so let's just get going. A brief introduction. My name is Vinay. Uh, I work with the Seattle Cloud Lab of Futureway Technologies. Uh, and I'm an architect there. I, my interests are in uh, Kubernetes, Skates, computing, and uh, networking side of things. That's where I, my focus has been for the past few years. Uh, I'm also the latest and newest maintainer of the CNCF uh, CNI Genie project. We're hoping to bring some of the new ideas that we have, uh, we'll be talking about in the MISAR project today into the CNI Genie as well. Uh, I also am a ski instructor. I teach little kiddos how to ski, and uh, which essentially is bribing them with gummies and then asking them to do things and they do it for you. It's a good currency, it works. <laughs> so if you're ever on a ski slope and you see a kiddo come racing down the ski slope and knocks you over, it's probably my fault. <laughs> so I'm gonna have Fu introduce himself. Yeah. Thanks, Vinay. Uh, so my name is Fu. I'm a software engineer also at Futureway. Uh, my, I mainly work on Kubernetes and networking there. Uh, I have a miniature Australian Shepherd who is about five years old and a ragdoll cat that's about three years old. I was actually told recently that the cat really misses me and has been sleeping on a shirt that I left on the couch for the past uh, week or so. So <laughs> we'll see what happens when I get home. And with that, I'll pass it back to Vinay for our first um, agenda. Okay, uh, so let's see if we can get this working. So the agenda for today, uh, we're gonna look at what QoS means uh, for network traffic, and Fu is gonna talk a little bit about uh, eBPF and XDP at a high level. I think a lot of people already know a lot about this, but we wanna bring it, do an intro of that for, to segue into the MISAR, how we use XDP. And then we'll look at the QoS use case that we have, that specific thing around which we built our solution and uh, talk about our design, dive a little bit deeper into the details and look at how uh, things work with our solution. And uh, we're gonna try a demo, fingers crossed. Just before this talk started, things had crashed. <laughs> and not our fault, it's MacBook Pro's fault. <laughs> it's a really nice beast, but it has some instabilities. But it's up and running now, let's hope we don't have to use the video. Uh, and then we're gonna look at some of the results and then uh, discuss some of the next steps that we have for plan for uh, in the coming year or so. And then we'll open it up for Q&A. So QoS, well, it's a fact of life. We experience it around us every day. Take, for example, emergency response. The sheriff's car uh, can get priority access to the streets and traffic lanes and the traffic signals uh, when he's responding to an emergency compared to the tow truck that's towing away my jalopy. And that's because sheriff's business is important business. They're responding to an emergency is important business. You know, those uh, fresh hot donuts aren't gonna eat themselves. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get a jaywalking ticket tonight. <laughs> Another example is HOE lanes. There are incentives to, you know, driving green, carpooling. And uh, lastly, take for example how I got here. I took the flight from Seattle to Austin to get here, and when I did that, I experienced some QoS back there. And well, I got an extra bag of peanuts, so it wasn't that bad. <laughs> well, um, let's dive into what QoS kind of means for network traffic. Similar to, in a similar mapping to real life, network traffic, not all traffic are born equal. We have real-time applications like Zoom and FaceTime, 
Uh, these are applications we are very familiar with after the last two years. So they have certain characteristics. They, require, they have some requirements from the network, like low latency, low jitter, and low loss. And they need some bandwidth guarantees. Uh, it wouldn't be great for great experience if they were losing a lot of packets. Then we have streaming video and audio kind of traffic, uh, YouTube, Netflix, also something we are very familiar with after the last two years. So uh, they are a little bit more tolerant to uh, losses because they t tend to buffer traffic at the receiver end before starting a playback, uh, but they do need some bandwidth guarantees for the duration of the time that the traffic, the application is playing its video or audio. And lastly, we have uh, data traffic file backup, log backup, uh, emails. These are important traffic, but it's okay if they don't, they don't have to get there now, now, now. They can you know, tolerate a little bit of loss, and as long as it's within reasonable time, it's all about capacity planning. So uh, now I will hand it back to Fu for a description of eBPF, an overview of eBPF and XTP. Sure, thanks, Vinay. So, X, or eBPF. There's actually been a, like, a quite a few talks recently in the a couple of weeks here about EPPF, but I'm just gonna go over like a very brief intro about it. Um, EPPF is a technology that allows you to uh, slave free run programs in the kernel. The current use cases for it include networking, security, and observability. Uh, it's actually deployed in production today at many big companies, including Cloudflare, Netflix, and Facebook. There's actually work in progress now to put EPPF on Windows at Microsoft. Um, some example use cases of it in production include uh, packet inspection, performance analysis, security monitoring, networking, and uh, like a firewall. Um, EBPF programs are event driven. They can attach to kernel hook points and execute code when an event happens. Furthermore, instead of having to call numerous kernel functions, EBPF allows for easy access to the kernel via um, very fixed, easy to use API called the BPF helpers. These programs also usually come in pairs. A program in user space can modify or push information to the BPF maps. Then these maps can then be accessed by another program running in the kernel space. Um, the safety of the BPF programs are guaranteed by the verifier. Um, it does this by not allowing certain things such as unbounded loops and a limit on the number of instructions. And in this picture right here, we have an example of a BPF program monitoring the return of an exec syscall. All right, so on to XDP. XDP is a kernel hook point on the Rx path in which you can attach an EPPF program. This hook point happens before SKB allocation, and it allows for extremely efficient packet processing. It's not a kernel bypass, so we can still rely on the uh, safety features provided by the kernel. Um, the main thing that we're using XD for is uh, we use it to pa uh, process packets and modify them and then send them out like a different interface or something. These comes in, we do this by using uh, these five actions that X XD provides. These actions include uh, XDTX, which sends the packet right back out the same interface on which it was received, XDP redirect, which sends it to another interface, um, XD pass, which passes to the network stack, XP drop, which just drops the packet, and uh, XDP abort, which also drops the packet, but usually you use this action when there's like an error in your program or something. Now onto our project, Mizar. Um, Mizar is a container network plugin for Kubernetes that utilizes EBPF and XDP. Um, it provides multi-tenant networking via Arctos, which is a Kubernetes fork. We use Geneve as the overlay encapsulation protocol. It's similar to VXLAN GRE in that it has a vari variable length optional header. Um, we utilize these optional headers and BPF to implement uh, multiple VPCs and subnets, network fast path, and uh, load balancers. This is a very um, basic diagram of uh, the Mizar uh, architecture. This is the node architecture, actually. Um, the Mizar node agent, we call it the transit daemon, is a user space program that's responsible for uh, pushing information to the BPF maps from user space. Um, we have two programs that run in kernel space, the transit XDP, which runs on the ETH0, and the transit agent, which runs on the VETH interface of the pair between for the uh, container. The 
main XE program on ETH0 is responsible for the RX, and the one on the VETH pair in the root namespace is responsible for um, packets in TX. And with that, I'm gonna pass it back to Vinay to explain how we utilize uh, QoS in Mizar. Thank you, Fu, for the intro. Uh, so uh, next, well, let's take a closer look at uh, what QoS, uh, the enforcement points of QoS. When, when you connect, when you have your device, you connect to some kind of a service, uh, maybe it's your Netflix app, uh, what happens is packets traverse back and forth between the service, the server process and your device process. And they traverse a series of network switches and routers. And each of these switches and routers, including the ingress and egress points are enforcement points for QoS. On the egress, uh, we can use differentiated services. There is, it's a internet standard that's been around for a while. And it's a way of tagging packets uh, and using that tags to uh, classify packets into different priorities as high, low, medium, or best effort, uh, real time. And the techniques that are used for doing this are priority queues, token bucket rate for rate limiting, five or fair queues. These are all facilities that have been available and around for some time in the Linux kernel as well as in the network switches and routers. They understand diff serve classes. So, uh, and then when the packets reach the ingress, if the host application, the receiver application is not able to mm -hmm. handle the rate limit at the rate at which the packets are coming, they can be rate limited or dropped or if there is some policy which defines what the, what's allowed for them, they can be. It's typically not the best to drop packets because of some number at the ingress, uh, because the packets have already traveled all the way from the source to the destination and used up the network resources. So unless there is no other go, uh, we generally want to avoid that. And for that reason, in MISA, we haven't considered the ingress rate, ingress QoS. We have focused on the egress side of things. Now let's uh, let's go to the next slide and talk about uh, the use case. So, this consider this. This is uh, we call it a sender VM because it's hosting two pods, two Kubernetes pods that are sending packets uh, out to uh, different destinations. One of them uh, it's a payment processing pod that's handling process that's processing maybe credit card swipes and then authorizing it from the checkout counter at the store somewhere. And then the other one is back, it's a backup pod which is backing up logs or files or something. Clearly one of these pods has more important things to say, but they're competing for the same egress bandwidth. Uh, in the interest of fairness, we might drop traffic from the high priority. We consider this as a high priority pod because it's, you know, it's bringing you money. But to be fair, we want to drop traffic from here. What that does is it materializes as, a, it manifests as a long checkout line because people are waiting for their cards to go through and it's not happening and somebody at the end of the line might get frustrated and say, drop their cart and leave. Say, I'll come back later. Now that's money lost for the business. Not a good thing. Now, but, you know, we can do better. And in the next few slides, we're gonna see how. So now let's look at the implementation. Uh, this is a design that we, uh, that, that we came up with for Mizar. It looks like there's a lot going on here, but uh, it, in reality, it's fairly simple. It's a two-step process, so let's break it down. We, we came up with three classes, three traffic classes, the premium, the best effort, and the expedited class of traffic. Uh, in that order, the highest is premium, and expedited for, is the next highest class traffic class followed by best effort. Going back to that example where we have two pods, one is uh, doing backup and the other one is doing payment processing. What we want to see is how can we give the payment processing pod traffic a higher priority or you know, more privileged handling. And for that, it's essentially a two-step process. The first step is classification, which is kind of figuring out which pod is the higher priority or more uh, the higher class of traffic. And we do that by uh, looking up eBPF maps. So if the EBPF, eBPF map contains a mapping of the source IP of the pod, the pod IP, to the class of traffic. And this is written down by that, whoops. <laughs> All right, there we go. This is 
we have the transit daemon in Mizar. It looks up the pod's priority from Kubernetes and then uh, uses annotations on the pod and then determines what the priority of that uh, pod is and then programs the class of the pod down in the eBPF map. When the packet arrives from the pod, the pod sending traffic, it ar arrives with the VEth pair, there is a eBPF program, XTP program really, that's running here and, and that looks up the map and looks up based on the pod IP, it knows what class of traffic it is. So now we know that this pod is sending, uh, this pod belongs to a premium class and it's sending premium class traffic, that's great. And then this pod here is sending best effort traffic, let's say. So the next step is action. What action do you take? How do you route them? We have choices, right? We can use the XTP redirect action, which pretty much takes the packet and deposits it straight out into the TX queue of the ETH0 here. Uh, and that gets sent out as quickly as possible. So that's the fastest path that we can have uh, in this architecture. The other option is to use XTP pass and send it to the host network stack where SKBuff is allocated for that and then we have prior, uh, priority queuing and scheduling. For best effort traffic, we also use rate limiting. So now we're able to classify the packets and then take different act actions based on the class of the packet. So this essentially gives us different levels of service we can offer to the pod, pod users. Now we're able to classify the traffic and then uh, prioritize them and offer QoS at the egress level. There's one more thing we do when we determine the classification of the packet. The overlay or the packet header itself, if it's egressing the node, then it has an IP header. And there is a diff serve bits field there. We set the code in that. Once we do that, the diff serve code can be recognized by switches and routers along the way, as I mentioned earlier. And then that allows us to bring end-to-end QoS for the pod traffic. There is a dynamic rate limiting feature that we introduced uh, for So for, for best of our traffic, premium traffic generally behaves well. They have a certain rate at which they send, so they don't really need to be rate limited. Uh, your streaming application knows that uh, it needs a certain data rate and then it uh, sends at that rate. Best of our traffic tries to send as much as possible. So we need to implement some kind of rate limiting in the presence of uh, uh, premium or expedited traffic. So we do that by uh, running a bandwidth monitor thread that is present in the MISA transit daemon. What that bandwidth monitor thread does is it periodically, or every one second, it looks up the TX stats, and the TX stats contains how many bytes were sent by, let's say, this best effort pod, how many bytes were sent by this best effort, by the premium pod in the last five seconds. And based on that, it averages and says, okay, there is increasing, there is increasing premium traffic. I need to con con clamp down on the best effort traffic that can be allowed and it programs a rate limit to the eBPF map. Now that rate mm -hmm. limit that's programmed here is picked up by another eBPF program that's uh, hooked to the ETH0, the egress snake, and there we enforce uh, EDT-based rate limiting. EDT is a, is a simple uh, algorithm to rate limit packets. It's kind of like, you can think of your train station. Uh, you have, trains have departure times, the closer the departure, departure times, the more trains get out and more people get out of the station. Uh, in the same way, you stamp timestamp the packets closer, then the more packets get out. Since we have classified the traffic, we know which, ta which packets are best effort. We can timestamp them closer or farther out, and that controls the limit at which the best effort traffic can leave the, or gets delivered to the network. So this is how we achieve rate limiting, and this is dynamic. So the bandwidth monitor periodically monitors how much uh, high priority traffic is there and based on that adjusts the rate limit uh, higher or lower. So that allows us to uh, give, uh, give uh, premium service and expedited service to the higher priority pods and yet conserve, you know, use the bandwidth when it's available. So what did this all do? Doing this, it gave us choices. So in, in our case, what we got is we have a notion of traffic class and we have notion of traffic priority. And to put it in a table, we have premium, expedited, and best effort that I mentioned earlier. And in each 
bracket class, we can have high, medium, or low priorities. And these are treated differently based on the DSCP code, which is the diff serv, the differentiated services code that is applied to those uh, those priority levels. And that is uh, queues that it gets during the network, and not only at the during the network, uh, at egress as well, the priority queuing takes care of, you know, prioritizing, say, premium high, well, not so much premium, but expedited high is prioritized higher than expedited medium and so on. So as I covered, as I mentioned earlier, we have enabled end-to-end -end QoS by using DiffServe. Well, all this is great, but how does the user tell us? Well, we go back to the good old annotations that Kubernetes allows us to uh, attach to the pods. So we created a couple of annotations, Mizar IO network class and Mizar IO network priority. So in this case, what we're looking at is an expedited medium class pod. So fairly simple, isn't it? Uh, well, this is great for our implementation. We understand it, but other implementations may not understand it, and we want to see if we can have a more formal API in Kubernetes for this. So we'll be starting up something for that, uh, hopefully, sometime soon. With this, uh, let's, well, at least we'll cross our fingers and try to do the demo. Fu's gonna do it, so he's gonna, he's gonna be on the hook. Uh, All right, thanks, Vinay. Um, let me just go over the, uh, the demo setup before we get started here. Uh, so on a single VM, we'll have three senders representing three different traffic classes. The first class is best effort. You can think of this as like low priority traffic that can, can be uh, completed at any time, um, things such as cloud backup or emails, as Vinay mentioned before. Um, the expedited class is the next one, and this represents somewhat important traffic, um, but it can be annoying to the user if it's throttled. Uh, this is like video streaming, like you're watching something on Netflix and it gets all blurry all of a sudden. And finally, the most important of all, the premium class, uh, it represents things that are really high priority, such as like bank transactions, which can uh, be big trouble if something goes wrong. The demo itself will consist of two parts. Part one, I'll have the three senders send traffic simultaneously, and we'll see how traffic is divvied up between the three senders. Part two, we'll have uh, the best effort traffic started first, and then we'll see the premium traffic start and see what happens from there. All right, let's get started with the demo. So, we have three colors here. The green color represents premium traffic, the yellow color is expedited, and the white color is best effort. The receivers are all set and listening. I'm gonna go ahead and start a little traffic test to make sure that they can receive traffic, but they're still waiting for my uh, signal to start. So everything is connected, everything works, the ping replies. So now I'm gonna create a file to start the signal and start the traffic. All right, I'm not sure if you can see the numbers here, but on the right side, we can see the bit rate of the premium class is about around eight to 900 on average. The yellow is expedited, which is around 800 on average, and the best effort is around 400 on average as expected. And once these finish up here, we'll see the, uh, the, the actual average spit out by iperf, which would be about now. So uh, expedited is 857, or sorry, premium is 857, expedited is around 790 on average, and best effort is around 442. Okay, so on to the second part of the demo here. I'm just gonna clear these screens. Start the server back up. So I'm gonna start the best effort. I'm gonna start for like 60, I'm gonna run it for 60 seconds. Uh, no, we're just gonna do the, uh, the best effort and the premium just to show like the stark, stark difference between the two. So we see that the best effort is getting like the full bandwidth, bandwidth right now, 1.3 gigs or so. And now I'm gonna start the premium. And let's see what happens. So the premium takes over, it gets the full bandwidth 1.4 gigs, and the best effort drops back down to like around 100 or so megabits per second. 
And that concludes the demo. And I'll pass it back to Vinay to uh, show us some graphs and pretty colors. Thank, thank you, Fu. So, thank you. So, holding the fingers crossed worked <laughs> in this case. Uh, what you're looking at is essentially the best of traffic being throttled by the presence of premium traffic here. And when, when the premium traffic got done, we're getting more bandwidth back to the best of traffic right here. So that's the dynamic bandwidth rate limiting at work. So, well, that is good. Now you can crash. <laughs> it actually crashed right before this for some reason. Yeah, it did. That's the funny part. Let's bring back the presentation. All right, you can open your eyes now. <laughs> okay, just to look at what we saw in the demo in, in the form of a table, which makes it a lot easier to understand. Um, this was a previous experiment where we saw the, with QoS, the premium traffic got more bandwidth than the expedited followed by best effort, which was clamped down to around 20% or between 10 to 20%. And with, we did this experiment with QoS turned off, and we got this, which is, it's anybody's bet at that point because everybody's competing for traffic and best effort happened to get, you know, take more in that case. It could very well have been premium. It's just anyone's guess. The other part, the second part of the demo that we saw was that uh, when the, the, what you see there in the red, uh, orange line is the bandwidth usage by best effort traffic. So we were at 1.2 gig or so up until 10 to 15 seconds. In this case, we were 10 seconds where we hit off the premium traffic once we started that stream. Uh, the rate limiting kicked in and pulled the rate limit all the way down to 10%, and the premium traffic got all the bandwidth that it needed. This is a very crude experiment. We're using three UDP streams. This is not how it's supposed to behave, but it kind of gets the point across. And uh, the best part about this is to do all this to achieve uh, CNI networking with MISAR, with XDB. Uh, how many lines of kernel code did we have to change? Exactly zero. That's the magic of eBPF. So, um, so what's next? Uh, this is probably the most important slide, to me at least. Um, this is, a, you could say, a laundry list of some things we wish for and some things we're working on. Uh, the TX hook for XDP, uh, this would be nice to have because currently we are using uh, XDP program attached to a vSphere that's in generic mode, which is not exactly performant. If we could minimize its footprint, have it do very little, and then have most of the work being done on the TX by in driver mode, or better yet, in uh, offload mode, then it would really supercharge the data path for us, and that would make the solution really compelling. Uh, Another thing that I briefly touched upon before is the API enhancement for Kubernetes. There is an increasing, we're seeing an increasing demand for uh, a better way for users to express that we need so much bandwidth for our pods traffic, and in our case, we need this QoS levels. So we want to propose, we're looking to propose, make a proposal of uh, a formal API change to Kubernetes, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, CNI Genie, as I mentioned, I took it over, and we're looking to bring in some XDP-related innovation that we have from Misa into that. Uh, and make it uh, uh, an appealing solution for multi-home networking. And performance measurement is one of the things that we're starting to look into. Today we have CNIs out there, but we don't know how well their control plane performs. For example, uh, when the pods landed, how long does it take for the CNI to get your pod to network ready, which really is like, okay, you got an IP, that's great, but is that IP reachable? Can that IP reach all the services and other pods and the external network outside the cluster? Those are questions which we need answers for and we're doing some work related to that. And uh, Mizar itself has some things which are, are in the design but not in the implementation, like you know, consistent hashing and dynamic, uh, the distributed hash table implementations for true uh, scaling and fault tolerance. These are things we want to do at some point. And uh, yeah, but the bottom line is that uh, what we have, what we have gone on is that uh, the way I see it, uh, you know, Thomas Graf and his uh, posse of kernel hackers have done a great job, a tremendous job bringing eBPF mainstream. And now it's up to us to help carry the torch and, you know, realize the full potential of the eBPF technology. So with that, um, I will conclude this demo and uh, this presentation and open it up for Q&A. Thank you.
Uh, we have some links about our projects that we're working on that uh, I shared in these slides. These slides are available online. Uh, please look them up. And if you have any questions offline, please bring them in. So, questions? Yeah, hi, thank, good demo. So quick question here. So from what I understand from your demo, it's like you have a couple of demons that run on the nodes that basically, and these annotations, they need to be specified in the pod spec when you are creating. So is there any kind of a management plane or anything that you're looking at to auto manage? Uh, or And the second, uh, you know, the, because rather than, if you have say hundreds or thousands of pods, yeah. you know, it'll be hard to tag each one of them. Uh, so it'll be if there is a way to centrally manage that. And second is, I mean, you guys looked into like a service mesh like Istio or something. If I have, if I'm using an Istio, how do, would this interact with that? I mean, is, or is this a parallel technology? I mean, you know, few questions. Okay, so uh, let me take that uh, one by one. Uh, the first uh, first question was uh, whether, how, uh, if there is a management plane, yes, the control plane, Bizar has uh, the data plane which we described today. And there's a control plane which we wrote specifically for Kubernetes. Uh, it's based on an operator that observes the pods and then uh, it, uh, it talks to the, the daemon that's running on the individual nodes. Uh, we took this design, it's not exactly based on, uh, you know, the, the uh, watch kind of mechanism that's popular with Kubernetes, but this has allowed us to uh, do one, one thing that uh, a normal uh, Kubernetes compliant implementation wouldn't do, which is implement multi-tenant networking for uh, another project that we have called Arctos, which uh, uh, is a scale-out architecture. There was a talk by uh, Wang Ying and Dr. Shuang, my boss there, uh, earlier this week. Uh, that uh, uh, That's where the solution, that was the motivation to start Mizar. There was no solution that's out there which uh, can provide multi-tenant networking uh, today. So we started Mizar based on that. And uh, regarding Istio, could you please repeat the question on that? Uh, I don't believe there's a lot of interaction, but I just want to make sure I got the question right. Yes. Yeah, so Istio, uh, pardon me, but I don't know the uh, full details of the span of Istio world. There's, I know it has a sidecar model where it allows you to uh, connect across, and then uh, Cilium has been doing some work to, as, uh, to bring alternatives to Istio which, are, uh, which don't need the sidecar that much, I know. With, uh, if your question is about can it manage QoS on the pods, uh, perhaps it can. Uh, but the QoS tagging has to be done so that the operator sees it first, at least in our current design. Once the pod is scheduled and the eBPF map is programmed, we don't have a way to change the QoS. So does that kind of answer your question? Yeah, the, the current interface that we offer for QoS is via the pod annotations. So that's... that's so, so again, I'm, I'm assuming that probably there may be some way to automate the annotations. Right. Uh, because of scale, because mapping it on a per pod basis, Yes, so for that, I think what uh, our take is that uh, the user, the person who is deploying the pod, knows what kind of pod it is, what traffic characteristics it, it, it desires. So based on that, they will judiciously choose the class and the priority of the, if you make everything premium high, then <laughs> they'll all get the same QoS, it's as if having no QoS, right? So we kind of trust the user to make a judicious decision on hey, this pod, it's processing payment traffic, uh, so it needs to be premium high, or this pod is doing file backups, so we don't really need to be, yeah. To add on to that, sorry to add on to that, something like OPA or web mutating webhook might be a great way operationally for a cluster admin to take other metadata and apply those pod annotations. So just because it has to be on the pod doesn't mean your end developers have to put it there. So just as a yes. thought to answer his question. Yes, yes. So the the developers, the person who is deploying the pod knows what their pod wants. Uh, it's the same as, you know, today you have uh, standard Kubernetes resources uh, specifications for CPU memory. You know what your pod 
requires the minimums and or the maximum, the limits that you don't want it to exceed. You specify that. Nobody else will be able to tell that. We can, I mean, there are ways that, one of, one of the projects that's going on is to modify it, uh, to scale it up and down uh, without killing it. That's a different discussion. Uh, hi, thanks so much for the detailed diagrams. Um, great demo as well. Uh, could you help me understand um, what benefits or differences this um, kind of eBPF, XDP, um, kind of like redirect uh, queuing system is? Like over, like why, what's the trade-off versus like C groups with net prior? Uh, pardon me, uh, could you please repeat the last part? Uh, so there's a, there's a C group yeah. um, controller called net priority. Okay. Um, and I don't, I, I've never thought much about this problem from a container scheduling perspective, but uh, I, is there not like a way to configure net prio from a Kubernetes pod or uh, does, have you compared this against net prio at all? No, we have uh, not done any comparison with net prio. Uh, I don't know what net prio is on it, to be honest, and okay. uh, I have to look that up. But if it is something we can leverage, then certainly yes. Uh, C I, groups, I, as far as I know, was uh, all about uh, at a container level. So the pod, all the containers in the pod currently share the same network namespace. And we are operating at uh, that network namespace level. So all containers in the pod belong to the same QoS class. Mm -hmm. C groups uh, might be on a per container basis and there might be some uh, uh, intricacies in the design there that might need cons further consideration. Uh, I can't really answer your question, but I have it yeah, offline. Yeah, the namespaces and, then... and C groups like go to together. So, um, like a, the uh, process namespace uh, like helps you have your own PID counts, and then you can use C groups to like limit the amount of CPU usage or the yes. amount of memory usage. Yes. Um, so, like one of those that applies to the network namespace would be the net prio, um, uh -huh. but. Uh, it's net prio, I, I don't remember all the details. I was just looking at the docs. Okay. It, it gives you like a number to like order. So compared to other net prio yeah. uh, C groups on the same machine, then it will be like an ordered queue priority. But uh, I think there are some other things that you guys are implementing, like it's bandwidth aware, right? Like you have the, in your uh, eBPF maps, you have the uh, bandwidth statistics. I don't know if uh, net prio does that part, but maybe some of these things might be complementary. Yeah, I, I think I will have to take a closer look at net prior to better answer that question, but from what you described, it sounds like that might be a better solution compared to what we are currently doing. This is an experimental prototype and we looked at, uh, okay, when we route traffic over to the network stack mm -hmm. and we're gonna have to prioritize offer levels for service, what's the easiest way to do it? The obvious answer that was staring us in the face was, okay, TC mm -hmm. and priority queuing. So yeah. if uh, C group net prior is there and we can configure that, we might go with that instead. So that's future versions work. Yeah, I, um, I, I don't hear a lot of people talking about solving this problem at all, especially in a Kubernetes context, but uh, thinking from a Linux context, it feels like there's some pieces that could be combined. Mm -hmm. um, this is really cool, thank you so much. Thank so you. Much. Uh, I have so a follow-up question if someone else doesn't. We have two minutes, I think. Okay. Question online. Uh, Justin's asking, can we run this alongside Cilium? Well, sorry, what was the question? Can we run this alongside Cilium? Uh, probably not, uh, but I might be able to tell you in a year's time. <laughs> so the, the idea is to take this technology and then uh, try and see if we can bring it into CNI Genie, which is a project that allows you to run multiple different CNI solutions. and. Uh, we think there are some advantages to this with the multi-tenancy part of it. And uh, if we, uh, we're still in the very early stages of you know, uh, looking at the design of that, we just proposed uh, high-level ideas to the CNCF DOC in the annual review that we sent out. So there is a whole lot of, there's only so many things we can focus on at one time, we're short of resources. So uh, yeah, I hope that answers the question, but uh, the short answer is hopefully in the future we might be able to run this alongside Cilium, but as of today, no. Um, for your demo, there's four virtual machines? 
Pardon me? Were there four virtual machines in the demo? Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, so we took a local, that's, we got the Mac, the M1 MacBook, so that it can handle, it's a beast, it can handle it, but it sometimes freezes up. Um, the machine that was hosting the three um, competing QoS clients, was it running Kubernetes, or was this just? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so this Kubernetes and or Arctos and Mizar or just Kubernetes and Mizar? It's Kubernetes running Mizar. So uh, in this, the QoS uh, sender. Okay. Okay. So we are out of time, but we can finish the answer here. So uh, the QoS sender here is one VM, and this is also the Kubernetes master VM. We are allowing it to schedule user pods, and uh, the three receiver VMs are not running any pods here in this uh, demo setup. They're running uh, iperf natively on the host. Mm -hmm. And that's so that we don't have to deal with uh, the XTP uh, in generic mode that otherwise would be an overhead that we have to deal with. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they're in separate VMs so that they're not competing for the same receiver bandwidth. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why we picked this demo setup. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.